Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about different types of publishing from big presses to small presses to Amazon and barnesandnoble.com and we're going to talk about agent representation and whether or not it's going to be good for you. So as writers, I think one of the big things that we always think about is, should I go big and make millions, or should I go small and just be comfortable? Or do I just want to stay right in the middle, have my name known a little bit, but you know, not be the next JK Rowling? Whatever you choose, it's going to be its own journey. And today we're going to talk about the different options that you have when it comes to publishing and getting your book out there, or short stories, or poetry or essays, whatever you work on and whatever you write. So today I think we're gonna move small to big and we're gonna start with what I used to do, which is independent publishing. Independent publishing is where you write your own story and then you yourself are gonna get it out there. Now that can be in different avenues. You can do Amazon, Kobo Books, barnesandnoble.com, iTunes, Basically any online retailer that will allow you to post your books yourself as a self-publisher and sell with a percentage going back to the retailer. Now there are benefits of doing self-publishing. Benefit number one, you get to decide how much your book is going to be. It's not going to be preset by a publishing house. The downside of being able to set your own price is that if you look at a lot of other books that are being self-published on Amazon, for example, on Kindle, a lot of the books that are full-length novels are going for a dollar to two dollars because a lot of people don't want to spend a lot of money on a novel that's digital. I'm not saying you can't charge a lot of money for an online book. Like for example, a lot of the big name authors, their ebooks do run for about the price of a regular book, but they're well established and they're backed by a publishing house. Going back to indie self-publishers, like ourselves, there are other cases of books being more expensive, but these people are more established in the online community with self-publishing. They've been around a lot longer than most of us starters, and they've been able to build a reputation and a fan base. And that being said, they can charge a little bit more money for their books, but you're not going to see it like you see it on the bookshelves at Barnes & Noble. Do I think self-publishing is a good thing? Yes and no! I've self-published myself. My books did start at a small publishing house run by my friend, but unfortunately the publishing house had to close down and I ended up going out through self-publishing. It did really well, but it's not what I really wanted to do because I don't want to self-publish. On the other hand, my good friend, author Ava Lemoire, it has worked so well for her. She's completely self-published, she's working with other authors and getting more books out there, and she's building her fan base. So yes, it can work for you. It can get a little expensive. My recommendation is that you hire freelance editors. They can be a little expensive. Some of my friends charge $500 or more for a full manuscript and it's all based on how many words are in the manuscript. But do I recommend it? Yes, because you're not going to catch every little thing that is a mistake in your novel. Your plot might be a little off, you may not have enough setting, something random that you don't catch because, you know, we're the writer. We think our book is perfect, but it's probably not. When I sat in on a presentation for Folio Lit Agency, the agent did recommend one thing which I think is a really good point and a really good recommendation for those who are thinking about going indie. You should probably start your first book out as free. Yeah, I said free. And then at the back of the book, when you have your next book out, recommend that book two is coming out and that's when you can charge like a dollar because then you're going to get people coming back to read your other book. Okay, let's move on to small press publishing. Small press publishing are usually independent presses that are run by a small group, or a small majority of people that will do everything in-house for you and it's usually just a few people. One person can do all the copy edits and then go on to do the line edits and then they're going to help you design your book cover, etc, etc. They're also going to help you get your book out and they're going to help advertise your book, but it's mainly going to fall on you when it comes to advertising. Small press can be really good and it can work out for you. A lot of the small presses will allow you to submit your manuscript without an agent. You don't need to be represented. There are a couple websites where you can go online and look up small press publishing. And if you're not looking to, you know, 
go really big in the beginning and you want to start small, maybe you should start with a small press. A lot of my great mentors in the author community did start with small press publishing and it worked well for them. And for a lot of you guys that write poetry or maybe essays, small presses are gonna be where you wanna be. When I did my own research, when I was going for small presses, I did see that a lot of small presses were looking for poets and looking for essayists. So if you are a poet or essayist, I do recommend small presses. I think it's time we move on to the big presses. And now I'm talking about Harlequin, I'm talking about Penguin Random House, I'm talking Simon & Schuster. These presses are at the top of the market. And if you're wondering why I said Penguin Random House, it's because the two houses actually merged into one within the last two years. Now the wonderful thing about going big press is that everything is done for you, basically. You've got editors and you've got people who are going to market your book and make your book jackets and there's the development department and the editorial department, which I probably just mentioned five seconds ago. There's multi-levels in a big press to the point where basically they'll do everything for you. You just have to give them your manuscript and probably do some more edits along the way. They'll advertise for you. They'll help set you up with your agent on book tours and get your pictures out there. There's just a lot of things that a big press can do for you, but it takes a lot of work to get there. In order to get established with a big name publishing house, you need an agent. Well, Shan, what's an agent? An agent is a person that represents you as an author. They're basically your liaison to the publishing world. In order to get an agent, you have to be pretty well set with your novel. You have to be in a good place. Basically, you have to believe that your book is ready to go. And that may be where you need some freelance editors to come in before you start sending it out. You're gonna need a few things in order to get an agent. The first thing you need is a query letter. Do you know what a query letter is? I didn't. A query letter, the way that I like to describe it, is basically the back of the book. A lot of people I've seen on video and during descriptions, they call the synopsis the back of the book, but I disagree. The query letter is your pitch. You're basically telling the agent or publisher, if you're going small press, what your book is about and why they should read it. When I thought about writing my own query letter, it really came down to, what do I like to see when I see on the back of a book? Is that gonna make me wanna read it? And that's basically what they're looking for. You'll also wanna state if you've been pre-published before. They like to see that kind of stuff. Or if you're like me and have an MFA in creative writing, you might wanna add that too, which I did when I sent out my query letters. The second thing you're gonna want is a synopsis. And I'm not talking a 10 page synopsis of what happens in the book. Agents will usually recommend two pages max. I've seen a lot even say one. And that's a lot of information to fit in one page. A synopsis is basically an essay, that's what I like to call it, about what happens in your book. The main key points. You don't really want to talk about, you know, Bob went to the diner for a burger if it's not really important. I mean, unless that burger turns into a leprechaun and that's gonna take him on his journey. I don't know, I'm making this up on the fly. You don't wanna add that. Unfortunately, in a synopsis, something you don't wanna do, but you gotta do it. You gotta give away the ending. The agents and publishers wanna know what happens in the end. Not every publishing house or agent wants a synopsis, but I do recommend writing one because if you don't, you'll end up like I did and not have one when an agent requests your novel and uh, you have to write one in like two hours. Don't be sad that your synopsis is not very good. I promise, all of us authors suck at writing synopsises. Synopsises? Synopsises. Synopsises. You know what I mean. The last thing agents are probably going to want, in most cases, they're going to want 10 pages, maybe a chapter, maybe three. They're going to want your writing. Now I recommend the beginning of your novel is the best writing you have of the whole thing. When I was sending my book out, I sent the first, you know, chapter or two to hundreds of agents. Okay, maybe not hundreds. In the last three years, I actually sent my book out probably to about 60 agents. Of those 60 agents in the last three years, two asked for 50 more pages of my novel and then denied it. And the last agency that I'm currently working with and trying to get picked up by asked for the full novel. But it took a lot of work to get to that point. Let me explain. Two years ago, my chapter one was completely different from what I have now as chapter one. I actually rearranged some chapters based off what my friends were saying about when they fell in love with the book. I do recommend sharing your novel with trusted friends and family. Find out what they fell in love with and where they fell in love with it and when they fell in love with it. Because you never know, your chapter one might accidentally be chapter three and you may need to rearrange some chapters in order to get picked up. And you know, when you do it, then you get a callback and 
and then an agent wants the full thing. I hope this video helped you understand a little bit more about the publishing industry and the different avenues of publishing. If you have any more questions about publishing or anything like that, please feel free to message me at the bottom in the comments. I'll answer your questions. I won't say I'm a complete guru. There's a lot of stuff I don't know. But from experience, there's a lot of stuff that I do know. And I'm here to share that with you. You'll see in the subject box underneath this video that I've attached a couple links that you can use to find agents and publishers and small press publishing and different links on writing a query letter, or writing a synopsis, other videos that I've seen that I think are really helpful and more. Once again, you'll also see links to my social media pages. I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Instagram all the time. And I want to thank the people that have already seen the other video and subscribed to my page and have started following me on Instagram and Facebook and all my other social media accounts. Thank you so much for stopping by today and I'll see you guys next time.